How many of you can respond to the question, who is John Galt? If that means something to you, you're going to love the, this next program. By the way, I don't know who's doing it, but when I drive south from Jacksonville, there's a billboard on I-95 that says, who is John Galt? Maybe our next speaker will be able to explain it to us. If you heard our all-star prediction panel yesterday, you know there were fireworks. Well, Don Luskins was the gentleman who lit the first match uh, and got things really going. Uh, he is, if you've read the program notes, an avid believer in technology. But what happens if it stops? Anyway, to tell us today what the future could be, please join me in welcoming Don Luskins on I Am John Galt. Don? Thank you. Um, thank you for that great introduction. There is one substantial inaccuracy. Uh, you, I actually am John Galt. But you all are too. And that's the secret of Ayn Rand's enduring popularity. Her books are lessons. Her books are self-help books. Her books are guides to how to live. We can all be John Galt. We can all be heroes. Just read what's in there carefully. My new book, I Am John Galt, is a reader's guide to Atlas Shrugged and the Fountainhead to help you learn to live like an Ayn Rand hero, and at the same time to teach you what happens in the world when there are Ayn Rand type villains out there. Now, I assume that everyone in this room has probably heard of Ayn Rand. Who, how many people here have read the, um, Atlas Shrugged? I, I'm actually stunned that, to, to not see every single hand in the room go up. Ah, okay, here we got two big thumbs up for the virtue of selfishness here. Fantastic, okay. If you haven't read Atlas Shrugged, in a way I envy you because you have uh, before you a fantastic treat. Uh, the first reading of Atlas Shrugged is a transformative experience. In poll after poll, when Americans are asked, what is the book that influences you the most? Atlas Shrugged is always in the top two or three. The Fountainhead, Ayn Rand's other masterpiece, is also always in the top two or three. I, I got to tell you, there's a message in that. It is that we libertarians, we individualists, one of the curses of being an individualist is we tend to sometimes think that we're alone. I can tell you, I certainly feel that way. I live in Northern California, where a libertarian can feel very, very alone. I live just south of San Francisco, so I'm not literally in Nancy Pelosi's congressional district, but I can smell it from where I live. And uh, I, I tell you, I can feel very alone. So it is fantastic to be here at Freedom Fest. I thank Mark Skousen for hawking me for years to come here. It's great to see that there are like-minded people. They just don't happen to live in my zip code. So back to Ayn Rand. Uh, Atlas Shrugged was written 54 years ago. It is probably the best-selling book in the English language, which is an amazing thing. Um, it sells more copies every year. It's, it sold more copies last year than ever before in its history, and when it first came out in 1957, it was a bestseller then. Now, there's a narrative about that that's being promoted by the conservative community, and we all know that's different than the libertarian community, saying that the reason Ayn Rand is suddenly having this surge in popularity is because Atlas Shrugged portrays a world that is eerily like our world. So for those of you who haven't read it, let me just tell you what that world is. It is a world of decay, of economic collapse, of corruption, of despair, of things just getting worse and worse, of an invasive parasitic government that takes over private capital and everything it does makes things worse, and when it makes things worse it just does them again. Well, yeah, I mean, that does sound an awful lot like our world. So you could almost say that uh, Ayn Rand had some amazing prophetic powers, that, that she's the uh, conservative move, movement's own Nostradamus, so we ought to embrace her ideas. Now, we all, uh, those of you who studied Ayn Rand's life know that the conservative movement has always loathed Ayn Rand. Uh, she, she, is a, she is an atheist. Uh, the conservative movement is, is riddled with religious threads, so she's never been popular with conservatives. Well, it's politically expedient to bring her into the tent for a little while right now. We're going to talk in a minute about how that is actually a bit of a misreading of Rand. The world described in Atlas Shrugged 
talks a lot more talks about a lot more things than what's wrong with big government. It also talks a lot about what's wrong with big corporations. So we're going to get into all that. But on the surface, the narrative of the conservatives is actually very good. You read Atlas Shrugged, and I'm telling you, sometimes you just think like you're reading from today's headlines. Um, one of the most memorable villains in Atlas Shrugged is a uh, fellow named Wesley Mooch. Now, if you've seen the mo recent movie of Atlas Shrugged, they chose to pronounce his name Mouch. I, I just don't get that. I mean, when I read Atlas Shrugged for the first time in high school, it was definitely Mooch. Okay, so it's always going to be Mooch for me. We have our own real world Wesley Mooch. His name is Barney Frank. Now, I don't normally use notes, and I apologize for waving these notes around, but I have them because I want to be able to make exact quotations without error here. You might remember that one of the refrains in Atlas Shrugged is every time Wesley Mooch did some ridiculous thing that made the economy even worse, you know, he and his cronies would meet in Washington and they'd say, we need broader powers. Okay, we know government is the only enterprise that when it makes a mistake, repeats the mistake bigger. Well, let me quote Barney Frank. After the collapse of the U.S. housing industry and the U.S. mortgage industry, a collapse that more than any other single individual he engineered by, from his position in the U.S. Congress, getting Fannie and Freddie to loan money to and subsidize loans of money to people who couldn't possibly ever own a home, could never pay back the mortgages. That was all Barney Frank's work. When asked what we should do to clean up the mess, he said, quote, unquote, the way to cure that is to give us broader, broader powers. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. But the amazing thing is Ayn Rand did 54 years ago. Um, Frank is more like Mooch than you can imagine. Uh, starting to get into the microstructure of Atlas Shrugged here, but you might remember that Mooch got into government in the first place. He started as a lobbyist. He was the lobbyist for Henry Reardon, who's one of the great heroes of Atlas Shrugged. He gets into government by betraying Reardon. Well, that's a certain kind of corruption. I don't know if, I don't, this is one of these things where when liberals are corrupt, it doesn't get very well reported. So you might be surprised to know that Barney Frank was censured by the Congress for a scandal in which he ended up admitting to have used male prostitutes and paid them and sustained them in his apartment in Washington as a base of operations for them. Did you know that as a member of Congress regulating Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, he placed one of his gay lovers as a financial analyst at Fannie Mae? Now, I have no, I have, as a libertarian, I have no objection whatsoever to his sexual preferences. I have a serious objection to corruption. We're talking about a deeply, deeply corrupt man whose corruption very nearly destroyed the world. Another villain from Atlas Shrugged, alive and well in our world, is Alan Greenspan. Now, what character in Atlas Shrugged is Alan Greenspan like? Anybody remember Dr. Robert Statler? Kind of a minor character, but a very key character. He was one of two college professors who was a mentor to the young John Galt. And when Galt was still a young man, Statler left academia to found the State Science Institute so he could do his experimental physics, his theoretical physics, free of the grubby support of capitalists and people who pay tuition and things like that. And John Galt disowned him. He damned him. Now, at the climax of Atlas Shrugged, when the world finally totally goes down the drain, the climactic scene is when the government, having expropriated Dr. Statler's work in physics to create a weapon of mass destruction, this weapon actually uh, ac almost accidentally detonates in Dr. Statler's presence, and the description of his death at the hands of this weapon that his science inadvertently created is one of the most moving passages uh, in Atlas Shrugged. Alan Greenspan is Dr. Robert Statler. He is the most damned because he knew better. It's one thing to make these mistakes out of ignorance or pure power lust like Barney Frank did. Alan Greenspan knew better. Alan Greenspan for 30 years was a close associate, an apostle of Ayn Rand. 
He was with Ayn Rand the day she died in 1982. Best friends forever. He had no excuse. 